So, and I kind of swapped on that second one because, yeah, I just kind of pulled some stuff out of my butt at the last minute and, yeah. <laughs> Today is May the 5th. It's Tuesday, I think. Yes, yeah, Tuesday. And I have two interviews today. One at 1.30 and one at 2.30. So I am booked and busy. And I'm going to share with you guys my experience. So you won't be able to see any faces or anything. But I'm going to share the audio with you. And you'll get to see my face. Um, and I feel like this may help some people who are doing virtual interviews like me. Um, just keep in mind, I am not perfect. I don't have it all together, but this is real and it's authentic. Okay, so hope you guys will enjoy this and maybe you can use this in your your um, interviews if you have some coming up. Yeah, so stay tuned and see how this goes. What's up? About to start this interview. And I'm nervous. Nervous, nervous, nervous. Starts at 1.30. There are four people coming to this interview. I thought there were two. And this one I looked and there were four. I'm nervous, y'all. Of little questions and answers here around the table to help me. Just in case I have a brain fart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's You all can't hear the music going on, can you? No. Okay, good. Cuz Sam Smith and Demi Lovato are singing at the top of their lungs. <laughs> so. Hi. Hi, how are you? Well, thank you. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Will you, I, I don't want to mispronounce your first name. Will you pronounce it for me? Yes, Kiana. So I Kiana, said key, okay. like a key. I, I don't think I would have said that yeah. correctly, so I'm glad I asked. <laughs> well, Kiana, thank you for um, joining us today. We have several faces, and um, obviously it's a different setting than if we were actually at school. So um, these are my children. children. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we'll introduce ourselves anyways, um, even though we're doing this on a Zoom. But it's nice to meet you guys. Should I introduce myself too? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you can. I was going to say to start off with, uh, before we have you do your lesson, um, if you want to just um, kind of introduce yourself, share a little bit about your background and what brings you to be introduce, uh, introduced, interested <laughs> um, in our position. Well, my name is Kiana Scott, but I normally go by Q. Um, I am okay. currently working at the hospital as a monitor tech. I um, went to school. I, I will be graduating from Texas Women's University. It was supposed to be this Saturday. Um, I'm going to get my EC36 certification, of course, subjects. And this summer, I'm going to be taking my ESL certification exam. Um, I grew up in Fort Worth. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining us today um, and sharing a little bit about yourself. Um, what we are going to do, um, I've shared with them your lesson plan so they can peek at that, but um, we are going to pretend that we are the students for a little bit. Okay. And we will be kind students. We're not going to be okay. <laughs> difficult ones. We'll just be your typical kiddos. Um, you are welcome to um, share the screen if you want to use that. We do have paper and pencil so or pens we can take notes or anything you want us to do um and we're happy to answer questions of students or whatever so um i will you'll have about 20 minutes okay. if you are still rocking and rolling as you get close to about 18 minutes or something i'll hold up two fingers just so that you can see um so you can kind of wrap it up if you need to um but other than that we will um transform into kids for a minute and we will let you take over as the teacher all right, class, my name is Kiana Scott, and today we will be teaching place value. So 
Um, let's do a short little review of what we learned yesterday. Um, but we're going to start with our objectives. And our uh, I can statement today is I can read and write multi-digit whole numbers using the standard form, expanded form, and written form. Okay, so let's do a review of what we learned yesterday. Can anyone help me identify the place value for each of these digits? Let's see, Casey, do you mind telling me what our place value for the digit eight is? Um, that is the tens place. Tens place. Great job, that's correct. Well, um, then some questions in general. Um, what part do you see technology playing a role in your current classroom or in your uh, future classrooms? Uh, I see it playing a, bitty, a pretty big part. Um, I love to use technology to, um, how can I say it? Like I love Seesaw. I love that students, like it has the component where the students can add their own answers. They can do video, they can draw something, they can, and the fact that the parents can also see it, I love being able to push that out to parents. Um, I'm really big on competitions, not not like serious competition, but I love Kahoot. I feel like anytime you can get the kids to compete in something and they get to share their knowledge, they'll love it. Um, I love slideshows too, because <laughs> um, I feel like they're easy to use, but I don't rely on them all the time because technology is technology. Um, but yeah, it will pretty much be big in my classroom just because I know that anytime you can hand the kids some technology, they're going to be that much more engaged. What is your philosophy and belief about working on a team? And what role do you see yourself playing on the team? Ooh, my philosophy of working on a team. I know that there are a lot of different personalities and we all have strengths and weaknesses. And I feel like we all should be very honest about those when we get into a team. Um, like I'm gonna tell you my one of my weaknesses is um, I will take on too many tasks. That is one thing. So if I come into my team and I tell them I I will carry the whole load if I <laughs> if I'm told to or asked to, then you know, my team could be like, Well, no, we're here for you, we've got you. So just having an open communication and and again I'm very competitive, so I want my team to succeed. So I'll do all I can for my team. Um, I welcome them. I feel like they help build the culture in the classroom when they see that visitors are coming in and we respect them. Um, when I had the chance to go to open night or open house night, um, I just asked the parents, like, what is something that I can um, do or say to your child that will help them open up for me? Because I was coming in halfway through the year. I mean, I was coming in as a teacher and they were like, we don't know you. So um, I just welcome parents coming in because it gives students that more, they're more comfortable when they know my mom's here or, you know, Miss, Mrs. Scott, she, teach, she treats my, my parent like, you know, a friend. So I welcome parents in the classroom. <laughs> so Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, Joanna. I was, I was going to say, you mentioned uh, what you consider to be your weakness. Um, what would you, how would you describe your strength? Um, let's see, my strength, um, I'll just say that I'm pretty driven and I'm always focusing on like an end goal. Um, I know that there are obstacles, but I'm like, if I can get over this, then we can get to the goal. Um, another one of my strengths would probably be that I care a lot, <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> uh, maybe some, sometimes maybe a little too much. Like I will go that extra mile, like all the way. <laughs> Real life, it's all right. <laughs> it was funny before you hopped on cue, Joanna even said um, that she has dogs that she's always afraid they're going to start barking. <laughs> Um, what are three things that you feel like you would need support with 
want to write from the start to help you be the most successful teacher possible? Uh, three things. I, ooh, maybe classroom management, like implementing it, like especially because it's my first year. I don't have like that foundation to go off of. So maybe I'll come and ask you like, what did you do or what's your system? Um, contacting parents because maybe y'all are more familiar with the kind of parents that you know at your school maybe most of them want to be contacted by text message maybe some of them only want to hear once a week from a newsletter um and also i guess um really just maybe material and content like how would you teach this content like what's the best way what works for you especially if you were there the year before in the same grade how did you teach this content and what works best for you what is the one thing from your teaching experiences so far that you are most proud of i'm most proud i'm most proud that i was able to make some really good connections with my students um because I don't really have a lot of teaching experience. Student teaching was the, the one experience where I literally got to dive in there. And I had a student who um, was a first, it was her first year at our school and she came from another state. So she was a little behind because their curriculum was a little different and she was afraid to fail. I mean, she had some accommodations, but she was afraid to use them. Um, and I just pulled her out to the she, she wouldn't really talk to my mentor teacher um, and I pulled her out to the to the hallway and I you know kind of talked with her and asked her you know what's going on and she told me a little bit about her family life and from then on I just made it a point to make sure that she knew I was here for her and that I was rooting for her and and if she makes mistakes it doesn't matter we can learn from our mistakes so that was one of the biggest things for me was building that connection with her because I saw her grow so much in the weeks that I was at the school. Does anybody else have any questions or anything? Do you have any questions for us? I actually do. <laughs> okay. um, I am very curious. What kind of support do you guys have for first year teachers? Um, Another question that I have, um, what qualities make someone successful at your school, like a teacher? But other than that, thank you so, so much for joining us today and teaching your lesson and mm -hmm. sharing a little bit about um, your passion for teaching. No, thank, thank you. you. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. It was nice to meet y'all too. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you too. Bye. Bye. good how are you i'm doing very good my name's danielle i'm the principal and then i'm going to introduce everybody who's here so you know their faces okay. all righty so tell us about your a most challenging student experience if my most challenging student um definitely was an only child <laughs> and he liked things his way um and he didn't like the fact that i was coming in and being the student teacher and I was taking over. So I had a lot of pushback from him. I, um, he would always go to my mentor teacher and, um, you know, kind of do the mom and dad kind of fighting with me. I would say no, she would say yes kind of thing. So what I did one time was I invited him to have lunch with me and I got to know him on a personal level. I found out that he loves theater. His parents are um, really big into theater and he loves it too. So I just, um, well, this was right before we went on spring break, but I made sure I went home and watched his favorite, um, his favorite play, which was, uh, Big Fish. And I, I had made plans to go back and be able to make really big connections with him because I knew that was something that, um, he had really big connections with my mentor teacher with. So, yeah. So basically I was just trying to build a good relationship with him and show him that I care and I'm not just here to step in and take her spot. I'm here to help and learn from you and, you know. Do 
So um, go ahead and tell us about a professional failure that you've experienced before. A professional failure. Ooh, let's see. So <laughs> my first lesson that I actually taught in student teaching was terrible. It was terrible because <laughs> um, I didn't know the students. And so I didn't know what they like and what things um, were engaging for them. I just went in there. I, I knew I knew the content and I just went in there and really tried to teach them. But they were not they were not receptive. They just did their own thing. Um, and on top of that, I didn't know their names. So that was a really big failure for me. But it was also a learning moment for me um, because I from there from then on, I made sure to make sure that I get to know the students on a personal level and I know their names and I know what makes them tick and what, you know, what stops them and what encourages them so that, you know, in the future I can be successful and get, get through to the students. So describe the best team that you have worked with and why was it the best? Um, the best team that I've worked with is the team that I'm working with now. Um, and the reason why I say that they're the best team that I've worked with is because they, um, we have open communication with one another, um, and we understand that we're going to have difference of opinion, but we still respect each other at the end of the day. So, um, we're not tearing each other down in the process of having a conversation. We're listening and we're trying to get to, you know, some kind of resolve. Tell us what your classroom management would look like. My classroom management, um, I'm definitely going to hold my students accountable. And I'm going to start by, at the beginning of the year, hopefully, I mean, I'll have a couple rules and procedures in place myself, but I'm going to have them help me come up with those rules and procedures so that I can put it back on them whenever something goes, you know, doesn't go the way it's supposed to. I can say, well, remember, you guys told me at the beginning of the year that you believe that, you know, in order for us to have, X, Y, Z, you know, this needs to be in place. You know, maybe we need to not talk when someone else is talking. Um, I'm So I'm going to hold my students accountable, but I also want to be fair. And I understand that every situation doesn't have the same or doesn't require the same result. So. If we came into your classroom during reading and writing, what would we see? Uh, you would probably see us on the floor. <laughs> um, I love flexible seating and I feel like the students feel um, a lot more creative when they can have their own personal space and be able to get in the zone. Um, I, I mean, I just like, I think that it's best for, for reading and writing that the students get a choice. Um, so maybe I, I give them a little bit of a category, but they have a wide range of options that they can choose from. If we came into your classroom during math, what will we see? If you came to my classroom during math, um, you probably see some kind of game. I'm really big on competitions and games. And I feel like after I've taught the lesson and the students know the information, let's put it to the test. Like, how much did you learn? Let's see, you know, if you're uh, like around the around the world math. I, my students love doing this and I love doing it for them. So we would do around the world addition, time, um, we even did spelling one time, but that's not math. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I love to create competitions, even a Kahoot game where they can um, share what they know. So that's what math will look like in my classroom because I like math to be fun because most students don't like math. What do you do if you have a student who is struggling academically? Um, I would definitely ask them, I mean, if it was just like in one subject, I would definitely ask them, you know, what their favorite subject is and why and go into that and see if maybe there's a reason why they don't like the subject that they're struggling with. Um, but another way I would do it is once I get to know the students, then I'll start adding what they like into my lesson. So let's say um, it's math or reading. If, if it's reading and they struggle with that and I know they like Pokemon, I'm going to add Pokemon books to my you know, classroom library, or I'm going to add a Pokemon reference in my math questions. Um, you just have to figure out like what works for each student. And I think getting to know them will really help that a lot. So how do you build relationships with parents and colleagues? Um, I definitely think that starts at the beginning. 
um, with an open communication. So the beginning of the year, I would definitely um, either send a video to this. I mean, if, if we're still in this virtual kind of situation, I would send a video to my students and my parents. Um, but in a real world, I would love to make a home visit to introduce myself to the parents or even send out a little survey, um, letting them know who I am or a brochure, letting them know who I am and, you know, um, get engaged with them and have experiences with them on the weekends if I can, like if they're in sports, you know, um, or, you know, go to their events anytime I can. But I think having an open communication where I'm available for my parents and my students is the best way to be. All righty. So outside of teaching, what are some things that you are passionate about? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I love to crochet. I really love to crochet. It is um, something that I feel like is, it allows me to be creative, but it also um, allows me to let go of all the stuff that's in my mind. And I'm only focused on this one thing. All right, well, those are all of the questions that we have for you. Perfect, all right. And well, we are interviewing this week and we hope to make a decision pretty soon. So if you are the candidate, then HR will actually be the one to contact you. If okay. you're not though, I will send you an email so that way you know either way. Okay. But I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk with us today. Okay, so I finally made it home <laughs> um, from my interview. And now that I've had time to reflect, there are a couple things that I definitely would have done differently in my interview. Um, so I had two interviews with two different schools and two different districts, and they were both completely different. So the first interview, as y'all heard, I had to teach a math lesson and I decided to teach it over place value for third graders. And I taught the standard word form and expanded form. Um, I, I, I couldn't see the panel's faces while I shared my screen. So I don't know if maybe that was user error or if that's just something that happens. But next time I would definitely make sure I can see their faces. I couldn't tell, but I did enjoy that one just because the the panel seemed so much friend like they seemed so friendly, really friendly. The um the second interview is the one that I'm nervous about. So they didn't have me teach a lesson. And I thought that one's going to be a little bit less stress, but there were eight people on the panel, eight people. I think she had at least one person from every grade. <laughs> she had the assistant principal. Um, so yeah, and it was so short. So I'm hoping I can get a call back from both of them, but I really want the second one. So, and I kind of flopped on that second one because yeah, I just kind of pulled some stuff out of my butt at the last minute and yeah, 